Hi, my name is Roya and I'm interested in AI and accessibility. I enjoyed reading this article which authors use CNN for the classification of raw dry EG signals without any data pre-processing and I want to share it with you as well. CNN or convolutional neural networks extract unique features across multiple layers of convolutional transformation to learn how to differentiate between data classes. BCI stands for brain-computer interaction and signal processing is one of the primary components in BCI. This needs the use of manual pre-processing and feature extraction stages to transform the data into suitable format for prediction tasks. Electroencephalography is the most common data acquisition approach in BCI. SSVP enables the measurement of neural activity in response to flickering stimuli that the subject is fixated upon. SSVP can be used to allow people with severe physical disabilities to be aided via BCI applications. Using the impedance check display built into NeuroGuide, we can see which positions are not contacting well. This is how authors did experimental setup. The subjects wearing the dry EG headset sat in front of a 60 Hz refresh rate LCD monitor and data was recorded from a range of SSVP stimuli frequencies 10, 12, 15 and 30 Hz using PsychoPy. The SSVP stimuli were presented on a primary computer. For real-time processing, cortical signals were streamed via the data acquisition software on a secondary computer and sent back to the primary computer. The article proposes a CNN architecture comprising of a 1D convolutional layer, batch normalization, and max pooling. These are the hyperparameters the authors used to set up CNN network. The structure of a CNN used in this work is displayed in this picture. The architecture has a large initial filter to capture the frequencies that are going to be classified in the dry EEG data, and batch normalization used to help counterbalance the noisy EEG data. In the convolution layer, the input is convolved via kernels to obtain feature maps. This process removes the requirement for feature extraction and signal pre-processing steps, and raw data samples can be used as a direct input to the model. And here you can see the softmax and loss functions used for the experiment. To validate the effectiveness of their approach, authors compare results with some other models. SVM being an optimal traditional classifier for EG data, the authors used it as one of their baseline classifiers with a Gaussian and linear kernel. They also compared with LDA and MDM that are frequent choices for EEG analysis. Recurrent neural network models including vanilla RNN, LSTM and GRU as leading neural network approaches are used as well. As I mentioned before, the traditional classifiers require pre-processing and feature extraction before to the classification stage. So to run tests on the baselines, authors use pre-processing to remove the unwanted signals and to focus on the signals between the desirable ranges. And then the Riemannian approach is used for feature extraction. We will see the results in these four categories with four experimental subjects and the subject number four is an unseen subject used for the classification of EEG of unseen subject generalization. Results for single subject classification shows that even without any pre-processing, CNN approach has superior performance over the baselines. And here is the confusion matrix of the results. This table shows classification performance across subject S012 and 3, where a new classification model is trained for each subject. The number of trials per subject for each class was 20. Here the authors only considered highest performing classification approaches and the result shows even with a reduced quantity of data, CNN still outperforms SVM across all subjects. Then authors classified all the signals from the three subjects together. It is a challenging experiment due to biological difference between subjects and the variation of the AG recording process. However, the result shows that the CNN again outperforms others. To test on unseen subjects, authors classified these data using a model which was trained only on the data of the other three subjects. Using the same CNN architecture, they only achieve an accuracy of 0.59 on S04 without any additional training. Their attempt to classify new test subjects using SVM displayed random classification performance, 0.25. To overcome this performance issue, the authors explore a deeper architectural network where they repeat SU blocks to a maximum number of 5. This deeper architecture demonstrates a much better classification accuracy of 0.69, and this might suggest that a deeper model is required to perform the unseen subject generalization task. To summarize, this approach requires no pre-processing to the data, demonstrates higher overall classification accuracy across subjects, and generalizes significantly better to entirely unseen test subjects. I hope you enjoyed it.